All right, guys, here we go with the latest chapter, part eight of the Tamiya versus Monogram Miami Vice Ferrari Testarossa Challenge. Today, we're going to be looking at the chassis and engine compartments and see which one of these uh, is better. All right, first thing we're going to look at is the chassis. That's the Monogram. That's a Tamiya. Here, the results were somewhat surprising in that the Tamiya, if you look at the bottom of the chassis, it's very simple, just a flat bottom raised there just to signify the uh, frame rails, a little more detailing in the front, a slot for the front subframe, rear subframe. Not much going on in here within the wheel wells. Let's see, let's see that a little better. Focus. Wow. Now on the monogram, uh, you pass the shiny paint. I was trying a, a new paint and I'm not thrilled with the way it came out. A little too shiny. But if you look very closely, it's got the same frame rails bordering the chassis but these actually have rivets or bolts molded in which adds just a little more detail than what the Tamiya has. It's also got a bit of texturing to it and also a little bit of extra detailing in the wheel wells that the Tamiya also does not have. Whereas the Tamiya does have. Oh, oh, you've got it there too. Bolt detailing going around the perimeter of that tray right in the center. So all in all, the monogram is actually detailed a bit better than the Tamiya. As you can see, there are a couple of places where the monogram is actually superior to the Tamiya. And the chassis is one of them. The shape, the shape seems to be correct and very similar to the Tamiya. You can see the distinctive shape of the rear wheel wells. Now the Tamiya does have a little bit of extra bracing for the car molded in here. And the monogram does not. And now, so I would definitely have to give it to the monogram as far as the chassis goes. Now let's look at engine compartment detailing. This is the rear bulkhead or firewall on the Tamiya. Uh, I added the uh, heat shielding detail using bare metal foil and then just painted the uh, radiators for the fins. But if you take a look at the detailing here, it's one piece with fans that will be attached. Oh, I'll give me a second here. Fans that will be attached in front of the radiators there. But you can see it's quite a bit of molded in detail. Again, the silver part is the bare metal foil I put on to simulate the heat shielding. And it's it right there. And then we have the monogram, which for some strange reason, which I don't really understand, they chose to mold just one radiator to the rear firewall and the other one is a separate part. But as you can see, the detailing in the Tamiya compared to the detailing in the monogram 
monogram is really, really lacking. Also, the monogram doesn't have any radiator detailing on the back side, whereas the Tamiya does. So in this case, again, the Tamiya is superior. This would be seeing the monogram in the Tamiya. Now let's look at the engine cradles. The Tamiya is built exactly like the real car where the engine is mounted to the cradle and then the cradle is attached to the chassis. The full cradle is a separate piece which contains the entire rear suspension. Then we have the front suspension, which again is another cradle subframe assembly, which also includes foldable steering and very nicely detailed with the shocks upper and lower A-arms steering rack assembly very nicely detailed one complete unit which just slots into the chassis there Again, really nice detailing on the rotors and calipers, similar to the rear. Now this is the monogram, which is somewhat disappointing as it looks like the complete cradle is here. The issue with the monogram is that instead of being one complete assembly like the Tamiya, this cradle has to be attached to the chassis before the engine can be mounted to it. And that's because the shock mounts are attached to the bottom of the chassis as opposed to they are the, the way they are on the Tamiya where it's all attached to the cradle. The same with the front suspension where the upper control arms and shock mounts are on the chassis itself and not on the subframe the way they should be. that apart from the fact that it doesn't have brake rotors is very disappointing the one plus it does have is that it does have a bit of detailing as far as hoses and lines underneath the uh, car don't know how accurate that is as the Tamiya doesn't contain any of that. Now, they also have shocks, both front and rear. And when assembled, I'm sure it'll look pretty good when painted and assembled properly. These are the lower control arms on the Tamiya, on the monogram for the rear control arms, which have half the spindle molded into the bottom, half the spindle molded into the top, which is here, which is, again, unlike the Tamiya, where the spindle is a completely separate component. As you can probably see here, one part that fits in between the control arms. So that being the case, I'm going to go with the Tamiya being the superior car in all of the 
major detailing in the way it presents itself. Even the even though the monogram does have the better chassis detailing, and the monogram will present itself as a decent model because the engine cradle, the important parts are there, so it's going to look decent when it's done. So now we're going to go toward assembling the chassis, and we'll continue with the Tamiya versus Monogram Challenge in part 10.